Okay, so we've already talked about the right-hand rule to figure out the force on a moving charged particle in a magnetic field, where your fingers are the field and your thumb is the direction of motion of the particle, and if you cross them, you get the force, right? So there's another right-hand rule that'll help you figure out the direction of a magnetic field that's created in a wire that carries a current. So in this case, here's this wire. There's a power supply over here, and charge is going to come out this way and move this way, conventional current. Okay, so you can see if I put this compass here and nothing's happening right now because it's not on. North is this way. So watch what happens when I turn the power on in this wire. The needle turns, right? So that means there must be a magnetic field. Well, to figure out the direction of that field, we can use another right-hand rule. This is the curl right-hand rule. So in this one, you're going to take your right hand, obviously, and curl your fingers, right? So it looks like this, kind of like you're an Aggie. And your thumb is going to represent the direction of the current and your curled fingers will represent the direction of the magnetic field. So if you notice, this is going to make a loop that goes this way, right? So again, if I want to know the field down here, right, I take this wire and I point my thumb in the direction of the current and the way I do it is I keep my fingers like this and I just put my fingers where I want to measure the current and that'll show me the direction. So under the wire, I put my fingers under the wire and you can see they're pointing down and so when I turn the power on field points down okay well, what about on top of the wire so finger pointing this way sorry thumb pointing this way wrap it around and my fingers point that way so compass moves that way right so that's the direction of the field so what about over here currents coming this way comes back around well right hand rule thumb points this way so on top of the wire my field should point down let's check it out hey and then underneath, right, thumb points this way, so underneath the wire, it should point the opposite way up, and there you go. So I have another thing we can look at to kind of show you this. Here's this wire, right, and this wire comes in here, and it goes up this way. And so I'm going to put it here so that you can look at the wire coming out at you. And what I'm going to do is put some compasses on there and connect some wires to it. So I'll put the red wire here so current comes in, and then you're going to see the current coming out this way. So connect this up here and now I'm going to put some compasses all around like this and we'll be able to turn the power on and see the direction of the field. All right. so notice all those compasses are pointing north right now. So when I turn the power on, watch what happens to all these compasses. If you notice, they all turned this way. So this is coming out of the page. Again, right-hand rule. Current's coming up, so my field should be pointing this way. And that's what you see in those compasses. And same thing down here. Current pointing this way, so underneath the field should be pointing that way. Right? Right-hand rule. Okay, so that's nice and all, but let's say we want to figure out the actual magnitude of the magnetic field. So I know if I have this wire pointing this way, the field is going to point out of the page up here and into the page down there. So it'll look like this. And I'm going to draw this too. So here's the current coming this way. Let's draw it looking at it's coming at you, right? So from a front perspective. So I'll draw that down here. It'll look like that. So let's say I want to know the magnetic field at some point above the wire. So like right here, some distance R away, right? So like here, some distance R away. And my field over here, right? Right hand rule is going to point this way. So let's say I want to know what the strength of the field is at that point. To do that, I need to use something called Ampere's Law. Okay, so let's look at what Ampere's Law says. This side is an integral, and this is really similar to Gauss's Law. So this says the closed path integral of B dot ds. So this side of the equation says that I'm going to take this magnetic field. Remember, a dot product is how parallel two vectors are. So if I have these two vectors pointing like this, it's kind of like the shadow of this one onto this one. So I would use cosine, right? But in this case, we're not going to have to do that because if I draw my path, which is what this integration symbol kind of means, you're going to draw a closed path. And if I draw it along the magnetic field, then every component of B will be along that path. So I'm going to draw a path that looks like this. That circle, imagine drawing a circle. That circle is made up of a bunch of little tiny 
parts, right? So I can imagine that this circle is really a bunch of little tiny straight line vectors like this that make up that path. Each one of those little things is a DS. And so if I add the magnetic field along each of these little DS components, these infinitesimally small components, that's going to give me this side of the equation. So this side of the equation, if I do that closed path integral along DS, it's really just going to be the magnetic field times the length of the path. And the length of a path, if I go in a circle, is the circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r. So let's look at the other side. This is the magnetic constant, and we know the magnetic constant is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th. So that's a constant. And then it's the enclosed current. So this is similar to Gauss's law. If I have this closed loop, whatever current crosses through that loop, that's what goes here. Well, if I have the wire, and the wire is the only thing in it carrying a current, then the enclosed current is just going to be whatever the current in the wire is. So this side becomes mu naught i. And so now, if I rearrange, I get mu naught i over 2 pi r. So this is the equation that will give you the strength of the field at any point around a current carrying wire. So if you notice, if I go draw vectors for how strong the field is, close to the wire where r is small, you'll have big field, right? So here, big fields. And then the further you get away, the bigger this number gets, the smaller it gets, right? So further out here, the forces will be smaller, right? And if you get far away, like over here, the forces would be really small. Okay, so something else this kind of leads to that's a little bit more complicated, but not much, is here I got this wire, right? And I'll turn the power on so we can look at it. So a wire, the field going this way is out of the page up here, into the page down there. So if I take this and I enclose it into a loop, then the field should be into the page inside that loop, right? And so if I take this and move it up, see how that's pointing into the page? So let's look at what's happening with a loop. So if I had this little wire like this, and I know it was out of the page up here and into the page down here, let's take that wire and extend it into a loop like this of current. Inside the loop, the field is going to point into the page, and outside the loop, the field is going to be out of the page. And so this is where this night hand rule is nice because you can flip what these two things mean. So before, my thumb was the current and my field was my fingers. But if I have a current going in a loop, I can swap the meaning. I can make my curled fingers the current and my thumb will be the direction of the field in the loop. So if you take your fingers and you point them in the direction of the current, notice your thumb points into the page and that gives you the direction of the field. So for a loop is a little different. Let's say I want to know the field at some point here in the middle. So that loop has a radius r. So for something like this, the magnetic field at the center of a loop, we're not going to derive this because it's a little bit more complicated using Ampere's law. But I'll just tell you, the formula is going to be mu naught i over 2r if you have a closed loop. So we know straight wires, I can use Ampere's law. The field anywhere around it is going to be that for a straight wire. And then for a loop wire, a single loop, it's going to be this. And by right hand rule, I can swap current field or current field to do that. So what we're going to look in another video is taking this. The next step is take a wire and not just do one loop, but do multiple loops and then see what happens there. That's called a solenoid, but that's another video.